Hi everyone, welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an overview of this MSI motherboard. This is the 990FX A GD80 which features the AM3 Plus socket and the 990FX chipset. So for starters here, let's take a closer look at the box itself. We can see that MSI has indicated they're using military class 2 components and that is high quality chokes, caps and other components on the motherboard for increased reliability, durability and less heat conduction or heat creation I should say. Also, they are providing a three-year warranty for this product if it's purchased in the United States, Canada, or Mexico. And moving over here to the upper right-hand side of the box, uh, we can see that this is NVIDIA SLI ready if you're going for a multi-car NVIDIA solution. Also, AMD Radeon, AM, I should say AMD Crossfire X ready also if you're going to go with a multi-car AMD solution. Also, Windows 7 compatible. This will use the FX processors, AMD's bulldozer line, once they are released, and also the 9 series chipset. As indicated, we have a 990FX inside this particular motherboard. Uh, also, they have the OC Genie 2 button on the motherboard itself for easy overclocking. Also, USB 3 and Serial ATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit, gigabit per second uh, ports on there. Uh, some more of that information listed here under the flap as well. Uh, some other things that we can point out is the Click BIOS. That's a hybrid EFI BIOS that allows you to uh, use your mouse within the BIOS and also boot from hard drives larger than 2.2 terabytes. Also have supercharger USB ports that will charge your devices much faster than a standard USB port. THX True, True Studio Audio. Uh, down here, here we have uh, some items on the board that we'll show you on the board themselves actually. Let's just uh, skip this stuff for now and take the board out so I can point that out to you there. And before we get to the motherboard itself, of course, we must go over the included accessories. So let's start off with this, which is a full color guide to the components, some of the features, as well as a complete layout of the motherboard here. Uh, so you can take a look at it in full glorious color. And... Uh, it's also indicating to me that you can use two, three, or four video cards with this. Of course, if you're using four video cards, you will need to use single slot cards, but you can use two or three, SLI or Crossfire. And uh, if you're using SLI, you will use a combination of these SLI bridges to connect your three video cards or even four together via SLI. Also included in the package here, we have some serial ATA cables. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six total serial ATA cables. And it looks like, yes, every single one of these has an L bracket on one end. Uh, also in these little baggies are a couple Molex to serial ATA power connectors. So six total serial ATA cables to connect all of your serial ATA devices. Plenty there. Uh, this is, of course, the all-important uh, motherboard manual, which you want to keep on hand while you're doing your builds. Um, also included, which is usually right there, but here we go, uh, the MSI. Uh, driver installation and software disk. You also want to keep this on hand. Uh, best to go to the MSI website to download their latest drivers for the motherboard after you have it installed, but keep that on hand, especially in case your network interface card is not recognized by Windows or whatever other operating system you might be using right off the bat. Here we have a software application manual to guide you through using MSI's software applications. Here we have a user guide for HDD backup, so you can better know how to use that utility. Here we have our certificate of quality and stability and this is for the military class 2 components. So you get an actual certificate card here indicating that these components that they're using, uh, the caps, the chokes, and the, the high C caps, uh, super ferret chokes, and solid caps in the board are all spec to military class quality. Uh, we also have a MSI quick installation guide as well as some other information about some of their other products. Uh, this is in many, many different languages, so uh, it's also very big. I'm not going to fold it out all the way, but this is general instructions for stuff like installing your CPU and other important information like that. Here's your input-output shield. It is black. It has all of your input-outputs for the back of the motherboard. You plug that into your case. Here are your MSI M connectors, and these will allow you to plug your front panel connectors uh, into the little blocks on here, plug the little blocks into the motherboard for easier installation of your motherboard front panels. Here we have, and I'll take it out of the baggie so you guys can see, this is a USB 3.0 bracket. There it is. Uh, so you can uh, mount this on the back of your case in a PCI slot, and then you can route this plug here, the blue plug, over to the USB 3.0 header 
on your motherboard. Uh, another little trick you can do with this, if you have, say, a case from last year that has USB 3.0 pass-through cables, you can remove that bracket, plug the pass-through cables into that, and then plug that into your motherboard, and that will allow you to take your USB 3.0 front panel plug and actually plug it into your motherboard, which is very handy to do, especially if you have a case that was uh, came out in the past year or so, because those tend to have pass-through cables rather than the motherboard header. Next up is the motherboard itself. Let me just get it out of the anti-static bag, and then we'll go over all of the details. And here we have the motherboard itself. Uh, just to quick look at the back of the motherboard, you can see this is a dark brown PCB, and all of our heat sinks are mounted with spring-loaded Phillips head screws, so they can be removed if necessary. Let's flip around here to the front, uh, where we have quite a few stickers and things. So I'm just going to take a moment here to remove all these, because it's something I just really enjoy doing, for one thing. Uh, while I'm doing this, I might as well mention that uh, this is an AM3 Plus socket motherboard. However, there are no AM3 Plus CPUs available as of the filming of this video. There will be in a little bit, uh, but for now, this is compatible with AM3 CPUs and AM3 CPUs, including the Phenom 2 series, as well as the Athlon 2 series. And if you'd like more information, go to msi.com slash service slash CPU support, and you can find out the CPUs that are compatible with this motherboard, uh, especially as they release new revisions of the BIOS. All right, I think I got all the stickers off. Yes, yes, so everything is nice and shiny now, and you can see it very well. Uh, so let's go over the details of this board. Well, first of all, it's a... Uh, you got the brown PCB, you got some blue, uh, you got some black, you got some gray on the heat, heat sinks there, so that's your color scheme overall. But let's start down here on the bottom right and we'll go over all the input outputs and whatnot. Uh, for starters, you have a system fan header, a little three pin right there uh, in the bottom right. Uh, next to that, you have your motherboard, I'm sorry, your case uh, front panel connectors, so all the pins right there. And you can use those along with the M connectors that come with the motherboard that I showed you in the accessories. Uh, to plug those in to make that much easier to connect to your front panels. Uh, that's those pins there and those pins there. This little uh, pins here with the jumper on it is a clear CMOS jumper. Next to that we have some debug LEDs and those are very handy especially if you're getting your system up and running for the first time because uh, if the system halts for any reason you can read the LED there you can see what is causing the problem and then you can check on certain things like whether it's your memory or your video card or anything like that that the uh, might have problems booting your system up with. Uh, next to that we have a couple USB 2.0 front panel headers. Uh, next to those we have surface mounted power, reset, and the OC Genie button. OC Genie button you push in and it's an automatic overclock. Uh, so that is a handy little button for an easy overclock of your system once you have all the stuff installed. Next to that we have a COM header for a serial port. Next to that we have a, wait, 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 this is a 1394 port, that is for Firewire uh, front panel. Uh, you also have an SPDIF connector next to that. And finally your front panel audio port uh, header right down there at the bottom to connect your front panel mic and headphone jack. Uh, moving up the side we can see a little THX True Studio Pro and that's indicating that they're using some higher quality onboard audio on this board. Next to that is another three pin uh, case fan header. And next up, let's go over the PCI Express slots, because there are quite a few of them. Uh, for starters, the simple ones here are the two black ones up top. Those are PCI Express single speed slots. Also, this other black one here is a legacy PCI slot, if you have a legacy device. Then we have one, two, three, four physical 16 speed length PCI Express slots. And these are set up in this configuration. The top one is 16 speed. This one right here is also 16 speed. So if you're going with a single card, you want to use the top slot. If you're going with dual card, you want to use this one up here and then this one down here, which actually gives, gives it quadruple slot spacing if you're going to go with a two card solution. And you want to use one of those longer uh, SLI, brock, br SLI connectors that you saw me use. However, these two here are also capable of PCI Express 8X. Uh, so if you use uh, the top slot and these two, you will have a configuration that is, wait, let me double check here, uh, you will get 16x, 8x, and 8x. So 16, 8, and 8 if you're going to go with three card solution. And then finally, you can also use a four card solution, uh, but in that case, you will need to use single slot cards. Um, and uh, I imagine that would be a little bit more complex to set up, but we'll leave it at that. Uh, you do have plenty of options here for both dual card SLI or Crossfire or triple card SLI or Crossfire 
on this board. Moving right along over here, we have this heat sink and that's covering, covering our SB950 chip, uh, the SB950 Southbridge by AMD, uh, which also just so happens to control uh, the serial ATA ports right over here. All six of these are controlled by the SB950 Southbridge. All six of them are also serial ATA revision three, six gigabit per second ports. Next to those, we have uh, what is, in my experience, the first ever USB 3.0 front panel header that is uh, side facing. So especially if you're gonna use some longer video cards and go with a multi-card solution, nice to have that side facing so you don't block. Uh, you really, there's nothing that you need to access in this area right up here. So there's your USB 3.0 front panel port. And moving right along, we have another uh, three pin fan header right there. We have our 24 pin mo main motherboard power connector. And uh, next to that, we have all of our DDR3 DIMMs. So this, these DDR3 DIMMs are dual channel. They support DDR3 overclock speeds of up to 2,133 megahertz. And you wanna use 1.5 volt DIMMs. Also, it's dual channel. So you wanna make sure you use two DIMMs at a time. So you can use two or you can use four in order to enable that dual channel capab capability, which will significantly, significantly increase the speed of your DDR3 memory. Right up here at the top, these little nubs are some CPU phase LED indicators. So uh, you can get some accurate monitoring of the, uh, of the power phase delivery being sent to your CPU uh, by reading those little LEDs. And there's a chart in the manual that will tell you what's what. Next to that is our four pin CPU fan header. And next to that is our AM3 plus socket. Uh, if you're wondering how to tell what an AM3 plus socket is, they are black as compared to the AM3 ones, which are white. So very easy just to be able to look at that and see. Uh, around that, you can see the bracket that you want to use to uh, connect your CPU heatsink fan. Below this, uh, where it says OC Genie 2, this is actually uh, the heat spreader for the Northbridge chipset, which is the 990FX. And then up here, we have another big long heatsink, uh, which is cooling off the VRMs for the CPU phase power delivery. Finally, up here on the top left, we have a three pin. Uh, another case fan header, and then we have our 8-pin EPS uh, supplemental CPU power connector. So make sure you run your 8-pin EPS power connector from your uh, power supply over to that in order to get adequate juice for your CPU, particularly if you are overclocking. And let's finish off with our inputs out and outputs here on the back of the motherboard. Uh, right over here we have a couple PS2 ports, green and purple for our mouse and keyboard. Uh, right in between those, we have a clear CMOS button, that little black one right there, so externally located, so you don't have to get into your computer to reset your BIOS. Next to that, we have some audio outputs. There's a coax audio out on the top and a Toslink optical audio out below that. Next up to that, we have a FireWire out. We have a USB 2.0 out. We have uh, two, additional, uh, two additional eSATA ports. These are external serial ATA ports. Uh, they're controlled by a J-Micron JMB362 chip, uh, and both of those are right next to each other. Those are actually eSATA USB combo ports, which means they are powered. So if you have a powered eSATA device, it should work with those ports. Uh, one more USB 2.0 port there. A couple more USB 2.0 ports below our uh, gigabit LAN port. The LAN is a Realtek RTL 8111E controller. Uh, for a gigabit LAN. Next to that, we have a couple more USB 3.0 uh, ports here on the back. And then finally, we have our audio. Uh, the HD audio codec is a Realtek ALC 892 and has a flexible eight channel audio with jack sensing. So you can connect all of your audio there or you can also use the uh, optical or coax. And that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Once again, this has been the MSI 990FXA GD80 motherboard featuring the AM3 Plus socket, 990FX Northbridge, and SB950 Southbridge. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg TV YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Newegg for more videos just like it. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.